Canopy Rivers is the investment and operating platform of Canopy Growth Corporation. The company has developed an investment ecosystem of cannabis operating companies across the cannabis sector. Canopy Rivers works collaboratively with Canopy Growth to identify strategic counterparties seeking financial and or operating support and affiliation with the Canopy Growth group of companies. Canopy Rivers trades on the TSX Venture under the ticker symbol RIV. I'm joined now by Narbe Alexandrian. He's the president of Canopy Rivers, trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol RIV. Narbe, welcome back. Thanks for having me, really happy to be here. You bet. Narbe, you've been uh, really making some bold moves here. Let's start with the most recent development. You've acquired uh, an, a strategic, or you've executed a strategic investment from Canopy Rivers into Biolumic Limited. Tell me about Biolumic. Yes, so Biolumic is Canopy Rivers' first foray into the agricultural technology space. Uh, so we've been looking at the space uh, in depth. There's a lot of technologies that are being applied to traditional vegetables that could be also applied to cannabis. One of those is Biolumic. So Biolumic uh, tinkers with the photosynthesis process of what a plant sees. So naturally, uh, photosynthesis uh, from the basic point of view, uh, you have a plant, the plant likes to take that sunlight in and it pulls that sunlight in and gives it energy to grow. Uh, what Biolumic does is it uses biological uh, uh, developments to tinker with the photosynthesis through a process called photomorphogenesis. Photomorphogenesis. There's one that's not gonna become a household word anytime <laughs> soon. Okay, so photomorphogenesis sounds like more or less, tink, uh, as you say, tinkers with the, the plant, but it uh, increases like the metabolic uh, photosynthetic rate. Absolutely, so what it does is it allows the plant to take in more sunlight mm -hmm. and it gives it a different type of light in order for it to grow. So think of it as a uh, light recipe. Mm -hmm. uh, so using UVB technology, uh, it, it sends UVB light onto the plant and the plant through that process can grow faster and can grow more. So early tests have shown that on lettuce, tomatoes and cucumbers, the, the actual yield and the, the uh, growth of the plant increased by 20% using the UVB light recipes versus uh, the, the sample size of uh, typical normal lights. Okay, so is the value in Biolumic then in the IP surrounding this process? Yes, so we co-invested with two new partners on this one, which are a pretty big deal for us. Uh, we co-invested with the venture capital arm of uh, Rabobank. Rabobank is the largest agricultural financier in the world. They, they finance about 80% of all agricultural projects. 12 billion revenue, gigantic uh, bank uh, located out of the Netherlands. Uh, that was our first foray into something that touched cannabis. As well as we, we partnered with Finister Ventures, which is the venture capital arm of Bayer Crop Science. Again, a $50 billion company. Uh, this is their first foray into agricultural technology in the cannabis space. So really happy with the group that we brought in. They bring a lot of specialty on the traditional plant side. We came in with our own domain expertise on the cannabis side, and it's a, it's a match made in heaven. Wow. And it's our first foray into the New Zealand market too, which we're really proud of. Wow, that's, yeah. uh, that's spectacular on so many levels. Okay, so um, what's to stop me from just emitting UVB rays into my garden? It's not as simple as the UVB rays, it's the light recipe that comes with it. I see. And that recipe is where the IP lies. Hmm. So uh, it, it's not easy to copy, it's not easy to, to really under, to reverse engineer as well. Uh, but what they've shown is that they've repeatedly grown uh, traditional plants. Our scientists looked at how lettuce and cucumbers and tomatoes biologically mimicked what cannabis actually looks for as well. And there's a, there's a clear linkage between the two. So theoretically, they should work. And this is a game changer. And in, in an environment where the cost of cannabis is going down day by day, and you're looking for those cost advantages, I'm uh, sorry, the price is going down, you're looking for those cost advantages, Biolumic can really come in and lower the cost and increase the yield of production. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, well, pff, I, I congratulate you on that. That's like pretty awesome. So now tell me about, on May 9th, you announced that you had uh, your portfolio investment farmhouse has entered into a second offtake agreement with Canopy Growth Corporation. Um, a skeptic is going to say, well, wait a sec, Canopy Rivers is part of Canopy Growth. Aren't you just saying that you're 
basically watering your own grass with your, your own hose. So because we, we share the same name, uh, people think that we're part of the same company. Canopy Rivers is completely autonomous from Canopy Growth. Canopy Growth is our largest investor into Canopy Rivers. They own about 27% of us. So the rest of that ownership is by Public Float, ESOP, and some other um, angel investors from, from the so company So Canopy as well. Growth is a minority shareholder of Canopy Rivers. Yes, our largest shareholder at 27%, but still a minority shareholder mm -hmm. uh, for, from the start. Farmhouse was a project that we kickstarted with. Uh, we were looking for... In an environment where cultivation was slowly becoming commoditized, we were looking for the best players to partner with in terms of capturing the global economy in terms of cultivation. So we bumped into the uh, producers of the largest greenhouse operations in all of North America. So they do uh, majority of the, the tomatoes that you find in supermarkets all over Canada and the US. They have operations in Canada, Mexico, Europe, Latin America, all over the world. Hmm. And we signed an exclusivity partnership with them. They're growing a 1.3 million square foot facility located in Leamington, Ontario, which they've retrofitted one of their tomato plants into uh, creating cannabis. Uh, there's gonna be about 100,000 kilos of uh, cannabis being created uh, per year. Uh, and so we, we partnered, originally when we did the deal, Canopy Growth took 10% off-take agreement on that. Then we signed a 20% off-take agreement with TerraSend, and now we just signed an additional 20% off-take with Canopy Growth as well. So 50% of that, the, the entire 1.3 million square foot facility has already been spoken for, which really did de-risks this project for us uh, and, and allows that, that runway for, for, for uh, the other 50% of uh, external sale. Okay, how do you arrive at the pricing for buying, for selling cannabis from farmhouse to those two entities? Yeah, well, we don't disclose the pricing, but the pricing is based off of what market prices would be. Okay. And there's a gradual decrease, of course, that happens over the years as we expect the, the, the cost of cannabis to go down and the price of cannabis to go down on a wholesale level. Uh, and and we, we put that all into it, but it's pretty similar to what market rates are expected to be over time. Mm -hmm. um, just to be devil's advocate for credibility's sake, uh, at what point, at what price, I should say, for cannabis does the commitment to take off take this cannabis from farmhouse become voided or are or these take or pay kind of contracts in perpetuity uh, it's over the this contract is over the three years mm -hmm. period of time so beyond that uh, we'd probably have to get into another contract again but at least it mitigates that first uh, piece of uh, cultivation okay um, okay well that's that's great that's uh, awesome for farmhouse and uh, farmhouse is going to become a public company on its own right at some point we don't have any plans to make it a public company anytime soon. Uh, the, the founders of the company, uh, the, our partners in the, in the entity, they are private greenhouse uh, cultivators. Uh, they're a multi-billion dollar company, privately owned, multiple uh, generations uh, of, of ownership in the past. So great grandfather all the way up to current, currently. So th there's, there's no plan to, to take it public anytime soon. Hmm, fantastic. Okay, and now let's talk about High Beauty. Uh, you announced on April 16th that you've uh, done an investment into High Beauty, a uh, company that has created the brand High. And what does High do? Yeah. So we, we really believe that the cosmetics and beauty industry is going to be a big deal. And one of the things we do to, to go into an investment is we landscape the entire value chain, all the sub-segments underneath it. So we looked at all 97 different identified sub-segments in the cannabis space, and we have about 20 that we're going after. One of them was beauty products. We think beauty products is going to be a big deal. We canvassed all the beauty product companies that you could think of in Canada, the US, and Europe uh, that were touching cannabis in some which way. Uh, pretty much all the names that you can think of. And we spoke to all of them, and we kept bumping into High Beauty. High Beauty is uh, founded by one of the, the, the founders uh, and formulators of Goop Cosmetics, which is Gwyneth Paltrow's multi-billion dollar cosmetics line. She founded two other companies after that as well, which, which were sold in Sephora, Barney's, and Bloomingdale's. And she was a 25-year veteran in not only formulation, but also in the cosmetics industry. Her strategy was, instead of creating a CBD product, she wanted to create a brand. This is before that, the, 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 the hemp bill. Uh, she wanted to create a brand that could go international, between states, between countries, uh, between continents, and really grow fast. And then she would add this, the, the, the uh, controlled substance onto it as well. So it's called High Beauty. It says cannabis moisturizer on it. It's sold in Sephora stores in Canada, the US, and Europe. And the, the plan was that now that she had that distribution all over the world, she would think of getting a partner to come in to help her with that CBD formulation. What better partner than Canopy Rivers and all the IP that we own around that area or we have access to in that area to help her out with that. So it was a match made in heaven. Uh, with, with a small team, she was in dozens of publications. She was 
in the Oscar swag bag for, for products to give it to celebrities as well as featured in Coachella. So right. great publicity on the company and, and brand building on their end. Wow. That is incredible. So even though I've, I've never heard of Hive, it's really quite an advanced story. Uh, very cool. Um, so what's next for Canopy Rivers? So we're, we're looking all over the world. Uh, I think the US and Europe present uh, some, some interesting opportunities for us from everything uh, from brands to uh, plant science as well. And those are the two key areas we're really focused in right now. We find on the science side, there's a lot that cultivators can do on the cannabis end. Pure play cannabis companies aren't really uh, as sophisticated as we see on the plant science side as we do see on the traditional plant side. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're finding some really neat partners such as Finister Ventures on, on Bayer Crop Science, uh, Rabobank, that understand the traditional crop area and can apply those knowledge and that understanding onto the cannabis side. So instead of finding one unicorn cannabis life sciences company, uh, which we still haven't been able to, to really capture, we, we're, we think there's about three to four that are doing some unique things, including Biolumic, that we can kind of put together and create a, a better package for how we can take the cultivation into the next generation of science. Well, fantastic. Narve, we're going to leave it there for now because we've used up our time, but that's amazing. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with how Canopy Rivers is not just resting on its laurels, but it seems to be quite aggressive and uh, you, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks very much for joining me today. Thank you for having me.